So, uh, Office Christmas Party then, Ryan, what's it about? So, in Office Christmas Party, uh, Jennifer Aniston is the CEO of a company and her brother is the owner of one of the branches. He's play, played by T.J. Miller. And uh, she wants to close down their branch because they're not meeting their... their their thing that targets. They, their targets to get to the quarter and she wants to close them down however Jason Bateman who was one of the bosses there and TJ Miller decide they need to throw a massive party to impress a potential big money client and when Jennifer Aniston starts to catch wind of this she decides to shut it down and in this clip this is when they are trying to keep it under wraps but it's not really working is it because she's in the room because she's in the room is there anything else actually yes this is a sample cheese board for a holiday mixer tonight I know it's a little heavy on the Gouda. That was the MVP last year. Uh, do have a feisty cheddar on the bench. I think that pairs better with the mulled non-alcoholic wine myself, but what do I... Wait, wait, sorry, excuse me. You're having a Christmas party tonight? Oh, it's not a Christmas party. It's a non-denominational holiday mixer. More inclusive. It's not happening. Yeah, it's definitely, well, it's not happening because it happens at 5.30 in the afternoon. It's just a small thing that's really important to all of us, but trust me, it's just gonna suck. <laughs> No, it's not going to suck because it's canceled. What? All branch Christmas parties are canceled. It's a waste of money. Come on. What are you guys not getting? All right. It's canceled. Uh, Clay, I mean it. Me too, Carol. Guys, the holiday mixer is canceled. Yes. Hey, it's canceled, Clay. Jennifer Aniston is such a party pooper. Yeah, she is. Such a she sour. She wouldn't have thought that. Come on. So Where's the friends, the Jennifer thing? Aniston? Oh, oh, it's oh, it's a party. Oh, oh, Ooh, it's a party. Oh, oh. right, uh, no, it's a party. So this film was actually all right. Yeah, directed by the the men who did uh, Blades of Glory. Blades of Glory. Yeah, one of Josh my, Gordon and Will Speck. It's one of my favorite comedies. Yeah, when Blades it, of Glory it, it, is. It's on BBC Three film. all. The, well, it was before BBC yeah. Three got shelved. It's one of my favorite comedies. It's so funny. Uh, I remember seeing it in the cinema. Uh, at about eleven year old, I think it was. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it. I've, I've enjoyed it ever since. Um, and I was I was worried that this would be. Another one of those Project X wannabe awful just a party movie where crazy wacky things happen, and it is. It definitely is because you know the, the 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 biggest portion of the film is on the party. It's all set across one day. But but and I'm very. I think we are very much in the minority here. If you look at the reviews that have been published elsewhere, well, I mean, it's sort of. I've, I've, I've seen some horror. I've seen some horrors. I liked it. It has a very sitcom feel to it and that's, that's, that's often a criticism of these films that they're, they're too sitcom-y but I think from the very start when you meet this massive ensemble cast you've got as we've said uh, Jennifer Aniston, TJ Miller, Jason Bateman uh, you've got people like Vanessa Bayer, Kate McKinnon, Rob Corddry, Jamie Chung you've got I mean, the, the cast is just so big and packed full of talent that some people will say oh what a, what a waste of all this talent actually I think they're all put a pretty good use no one lets the side down in what is a really good ensemble cast even if Jason Bateman is just doing Michael Bluth for about the 20th time on a film, uh, it's it's kind of the only role he can play that kind of wants to be fun, but also kind of we've got to stay yeah. by the rules here, guys. And he, at some point in the film, he's going to do something that goes against the character type, but that's, that's, that's just all the films he's done. Yeah. But don't, no one need to change. He's, it's, 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 he's fine. He's certainly more fine here than some of the other crap he's done. TJ Miller actually works in a film. I know Deadpool, but let's think about Search Party when he was given a lead role. Or, 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 or. And it was horrendous. It's not. And let, oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's <laughs> not do that. It's got a real heart and a punchiness about it. I, especially at the end, especially the music cues as well, it's got a bit of like a community feel to it. I think yeah. the, the big ensemble cast, I would like to see that used again, not in a film, because as we've already established, comedy sequel films are absolute turd. But I think party. this this bunch of characters and this bunch of actors that they've got would make a really interesting sitcom. I think the, the office scenario, forget the whole party thing. I'd like to be in that office for a bit more time uh, because they've, they've all got funny things to say. They've all got funny personalities. I think it, it, you probably couldn't do it now because the film has kind of advanced them on so much. But keep them as they were at the start of the film. And I would watch that. I would enjoy that. It's something that would probably do fairly well. I like that it's a bit longer than an average comedy as well. It's 105 minutes. You think of your, your standard comedy film clocks at about 90. You've got that extra 15 minutes to squash in some more plot, which I think you'd need to do. I think if, if you squashed as much plot as it has into a 90 minute film, you'd definitely struggle and it would feel too stuffed in. It's got that bit of more breathing room to put more jokes in, to have that same hit rate of jokes, the same pace. I think it's, it's a fairly good hit-miss ratio. I'd, I'd, I'd say like, two or three to one 
of, yeah. hit, of hits to misses, which is which is kind of what you want from a comedy. To find a, some sync. I mean, there's a lot of things that we wouldn't get being British, like certain, you know, American football and basketball or whatever references that we won't understand. But, but he is this American football player. Basketball yeah, player. don't know who that is. Don't care who it is really. It's not very Christmassy as such. It is kind of more about the sort of Project X party crazy madness thing that they've got going on. Yeah. But there is enough heart for it to be a Christmas film. Certainly it snows, which is always a good thing. Never actually snows at Christmas, though, does it? I'm always suspicious of Christmas films, because they're never, they're never filmed at winter. It always snows, but it never actually snows. I always snows. think that's really the most disorienting thing. Whenever like I filming see a Christmas, Christmas film or a TV show. They'll have been shot in the summer or oh, the yeah, spring, and it's like, like yep. they're it's all Christmas. sitting there eating turkey going, I hate my life. It's, <laughs> we've just had February. <laughs> oh, what can you do? And, I, I, and this, this is going to sound really strange, but... I really like Abby Lee. Now, she's not an actress as such yet. She, I, mean, she, I suppose she is now. She's been in a few films. She was in The Neon Demon, and I think she was one of the best parts of that film. This week, the um, distributors have been submitting their, you know, award contenders. They've been putting their, for, like, for consideration to the to those who pick the awards. And they've they've pretty much put forward all of the cast, apart from Abby Lee. And I'm like, she was... I know, I know none of them are going to win. Because it's not, it doesn't work like that. They wouldn't even dare watch the Neon Demon part, half the Oscar voters. But she was one of my favorite parts of it, and I'm I'm kind of gutted that that she wasn't uh, given more time in this film. I think what she has though is good, and I, I like her very much. It's just this little thing. She's not even given a big role, but I just like her. She does what we've just given. I just like her. I like her yeah. a lot. But no, I I I was surprised. I was very pleasant. I thought I was gonna hate it. Mm. But yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was much better than I thought it was going to be because um, the, the cast all worked really well together. Like you mm-hmm. say, it was going to, uh, like you said before, and they all just it all sparkled really. And by the end, it wrapped itself up really nicely. I loved the. Uh, I loved how it wrapped itself up. The soundtrack's really good by the end, and I think Kate McKillen finally in a good film, in this, a good this, film. This is a better, Ghostbusters. It's a better showcase than Ghostbusters oh, yeah, for absolutely. a talent. She's quirky uh, and good instead of quirky but uncomfortable like Ghostbusters. My bad. Joe, your thoughts on uh, Kate McKinnon and Ghostbusters? Still not a fan. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. Yeah, yeah. Let's forget. Not, not funny Let's at all. Let's forget. Uh, I would actually recommend Office Christmas Party. I definitely would, yeah. I feel like if we do recommend it, people will hate us for it, though, because yeah. it might not go down oh, very well. Oh, forget everything.